In this video, we're gonna list the seven best Vanguard ETFs in the world. We're gonna go through domestic ETFs, international ETFs, bond ETFs, dollar stock market ETFs, and you'll notice that with these seven Vanguard ETFs, you could actually build a pretty powerful and well-diversified portfolio. My name is Rick, your investor Italiano, but if you think that I look like Mano Ginobili, let me know with a comment and with a like to this video because I'd love to see how many of you actually think there is some kind of resemblance, if there is any. I don't know. So now let's not waste any more time and let's go straight to the first ETF, which by the way, many of you will think it's not necessarily one of the best, but I believe that still it's a market that investors should know and that's why I put it on the list. Our first ETF, or I should say our number seven, is the largest Vanguard ETF focused on emerging markets and it's called VWO the Vanguard FTSC Emerging Markets ETF. With this ETF, you'll get your fair share of emerging markets like China, India, Brazil, South Korea, Mexico, you name it. The reason why emerging markets are overlooked is that they usually perform much worse than the American stock market, and they are even more volatile. So why the heck should we even consider them? First of all, what I'm gonna say doesn't mean that I'm suggesting you to go all in on emerging markets. In fact, I also invest only a small portion of my portfolio in them. Nevertheless, I wanna give you some food for thought. Emerging markets launched as an asset class in 1988 with the MSCI Emerging Market Index. Now, according to IMF data, the gross domestic product of the 24 countries included in the index grew from $2.6 trillion in 1988 to $36.3 trillion in 2022. China and India, two of the biggest emerging countries, each have higher populations than all developed countries combined. And economic data shows that the potential for growth is crazy. The 24 countries making up the index in 1988 accounted for 13.4% of global nominal GDP. By the end of 2022, though, the number grew to 35.7%. And get this, over the past 10 years, emerging markets were responsible for 53.3% of the world's nominal GDP growth. But apparently, stock market returns didn't really grow like the real economies. In the last 10 years, emerging markets grew with a miserable 3.45% per year, compared to 12.01% of the S&P 500. This could be seen as a good thing because a strongly growing economy with a slowly growing stock market means that the market is undervalued. Moreover, it's true that they experienced really bad times like in the last years, but even extremely good ones. If you check their relative value compared to the MSCI World Index, you see how emerging markets returns exploded at the beginning of the 1990s, meaning in the mid-2000s. So, does it all mean that I suggest you to invest in emerging markets? No. I personally have a really low percentage of my portfolio in them, and I have to admit that emerging markets tend to be more volatile and risky, and that is because they are unforeseeable. If you invested in this index right before the financial crisis of 2008, well, right now you still wouldn't have recouped the losses. Yeah, it does look bad. But still, I wanted to give you this emerging market update because we're still talking about one of the biggest ETFs in the world and because I believe that as an investor, you must know all about markets without focusing only on America. Now, our number six is a bond ETF, namely an ETF that includes all bond classes. In other words, an ETF that you're going to snob if you're in your 20s or your 30s, and you should instead consider an important part of a portfolio later on in life. This is because bonds are notoriously less performant than equity, but at the same time, less volatile. The bond ETF that I'm gonna reveal here is officially one of the three ETFs of the famous three fund portfolio. This is a great lazy portfolio that I talk about in this video here, and you can check it out later if you want from the link in the description below. I'm talking about BND the Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF. BND tracks a broad market value weighted index of US dollar fixed income securities with maturities of at least one year. So short-term bonds of less than one year are not included in the ETF. With over 11,000 different bonds with high quality and medium duration, BND is a solid choice for you if you wanna start protecting your investing nest egg or you're close to retirement. I could waste some of your time showing you all the bonds included, but honestly, it wouldn't really help you much. Just know that when you're gonna start investing in bonds, this is probably gonna be your best choice. ETF number five is the ninth biggest ETF per asset under management and is a value ETF. Value means it's composed of companies that are priced lower relatively to their earnings and have low but stable growth. Companies like Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, or my YouTube channel, which gives value but has a very low valuation on YouTube. 
So consider investing in me by subscribing to the channel. It's free and the return of investment is huge. Now, the value ETF I wanna show you today is the biggest value ETF in the world for asset center management, and it's VTV the Vanguard Value ETF. This ETF has a five and 10 year annualized return of around 9.9%, which is similar to the annual return since inception of 8.59%. If you ask me, a really good long-term return for a general value ETF. The expense ratio is an extremely cheap 0.04% and in the last 12 months delivered 14.31%. By the way, November of last year, I called this ETF in a video of mine and told everybody that I was expecting a good year and by then the ETF and the value sector were still just going down. And well, I'm glad to say that I was right. With this ETF, you get over 342 wonderful value companies in all sectors like Berkshire Hathaway, Broadcom, JP Morgan, Exxon, United Health, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, and so on. If you invest from Europe and want to lean towards value, there is not a direct alternative, but you could go for the MSCI World Value USD from its trackers, ticker XDEV, that includes the whole world with an expense ratio of 0.25%, or the MSCI USA Value USD ETF from SPDR, ticker ZPRU, which focuses on the US. Now, I've shown you the Vanguard Value ETF, so I have to also list the Vanguard Growth ETF, ticker VUG. VUG is, just like VTV, an incredibly cheap ETF with a 0.04% expense ratio. As a market cap weighted ETF, it tracks the performance of the CRSP US Large Cap Growth Index, which selects the major growth stocks listed in the US stock market based on price to book ratios and forecasted growth. So, what are you gonna get with it? You're gonna get a beautiful mix of 200 stocks with an average return on equity of 35.3%, and an exclusive focus on growth. You're gonna get all the glorious tech and growth companies that moved up the whole stock market like a rocket in the past years, like Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Alphabet, Meta, and yes, even Tesla, even though it's not going so well lately. The annual return in the last 10 years has been an astounding 14.89% per year, but the last five years gave investors an average of 18.85%. So basically, if you invested in a growth sector in the last five years, you would have had comparable results to Warren Buffett. Please be advised though that price is up 33% in the last 12 months. So as I always say, yes, AI has a lot of potential and companies are booming now after the crisis, but when the markets grow so much, we're almost always headed towards a period of growth stagnation or even a strong correction that is going to hurt a lot of people. So please, just be careful if you invest in growth now. Let's move now to an ETF that is not focused on growth nor value, but instead gives you access to the whole developed world except the US. And this is not because we don't like the US, but because if you're a good investor, you surely have most of your portfolio investing in the US, so it never hurts to diversify a little. This ETF gives you access to stocks of large, mid, and small cap companies located in Canada, Europe, and the Pacific region. And before saying, the US performs better than international, hear what I have to say. So, if you haven't guessed it, I'm talking about VEA the Vanguard FTSC Developed Markets ETF, which is the sixth largest ETF in the world per asset standard management, just after the Invesco growth giant QQQ. VA is the largest and most bought ETF for developed markets and follows a passively managed full replication approach tracking the FTSC Developed All Cap X US Index. When it comes to performance, the numbers I'm gonna show you might make you think it's a bad ETF, but stay with me because I'm gonna give you some food for thought regarding the international markets in a second. Except for the last 12 months, they delivered an astounding 17.7%. The long-term results in the last 5 years, 10 years, or even since inception in 2007 haven't been great. 8.19%, 4.83%, and 3.13%. Quite disappointing. But here's the thing. While we hope US stocks continue to perform well, of course, history suggests international stocks may have their revenge soon. Since 1975, the outperformance cycle for US versus international stocks has lasted an average of eight years. That means, on average, every eight years, US stops overperforming and international overperforms. Right now, we are at around 13.1 years into the current cycle of US outperformance based on five-year monthly rolling returns. And as you can see, for almost half of the time, international stocks were the ones overperforming. Now, 
Is it gonna happen soon? Who knows? But surely the latest growth of the American stock market and the growth sector, together with the fact that for the first time the US is outperforming for 13 years, makes me think we might also be headed for another decade of slow returns of the US stock market. But for the lovers of the American growth market, next to VUG that I already mentioned before, I can't help but give you another great growth ETF, which is in my opinion one of the best ever. This ETF is the biggest information technology ETF in the world per asset under management. With a cheap expense ratio of 0.1%, if you invested $10,000 in this ETF 10 years ago, you'd now have $58,644 in your portfolio, thanks to a monstrous average annual growth of 19.35%. I'm talking about VGT the Vanguard Information Technology ETF, which gives you access to over 300 of the greatest technology companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Nvidia. And this in an even better way than VUG because it's not focused on the whole growth sector, but only on the best performing sector within growth, which is technology. This ETF includes 313 companies with a crazy high return on equity of 42% and an earnings growth rate over the past five years of 20.7%. If you invest in VGT, consider that the overweight of the first three stocks is so high that you must assume you're basically investing a third of your money on the three of them. Microsoft weights 17.28%, followed by Apple with 15.27% and Nvidia with 11.89%. If you want another growth alternative, the Invesco QQQ is surely the best around, and if you invest from Europe, probably the closest ETF to VGT is QDVE, the iShares S&P 500 Information Technology Sector ETF. While if you want a European alternative to QQQ, you can go for EQ. QQQ, which is identical. All right, for the number one, I'm gonna give you the famous collection of the 500 biggest and best performing companies of the American stock market. This Vanguard ETF is the third biggest ETF in the world per asset center management, followed by two ETFs from iShares and SPDR, which are exactly the equivalents of this ETF. So basically, the three most bought ETFs in the world all represent this glorious index which is called the S&P 500, and it's probably the most loved by all investors worldwide. Today we're only mentioning Vanguard, so this ETF is VOO, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. This ETF is my favorite, and apparently everyone's favorite, because it offers the best and most optimized diversification in the entire stock market by picking the best companies from each sector. Stocks are selected by the investment company Standard & Poor's, based on profitability, market capitalization, sector allocation, liquidity, and many other important factors, so there is an important vetting process of due diligence behind this selection. In the last 10 years, it gave 12.66% average annual return, while the return since inception in 2010 has been 14.32%. Now, the good thing about the S&P 500 is that it's really the ETF for the long run. You can invest in a particular sector like information technology because it performed better in the last 10 years, or you can invest in a value ETF because you want dividends, but for the long run, the best ETF that is gonna give you peace of mind because it includes all sectors is the S&P 500 with VO, or as alternative, the total stock market with VTI. If you wanna dive deeper into VO and also its differences with VTI, I suggest you watch this video that I recently published, and it's gonna explain the three approaches you can use to choose between these two great ETFs. And if you want an idea of how much your portfolio would have grown over time, with the S&P 500 index, you can download for free my compound interest calculator from the link in the description below. All right, these were the best Vanguard ETFs you can possibly find and should absolutely know as an investor. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and drop a like to this video. I wish you a great day or evening. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.